Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. Yes, this has been a busy, busy day. <laughs> okay, now here is the, um, <clears throat> well, let me back up for a minute. Um, if you're just seeing this video but haven't seen the previous two videos, um, the, there has been three arrests. Um, one was Don Russell, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with Don Russell. He um, claimed to be, first he claimed to be R. Kelly's manager. Then he backtracked and said that he was just helping him with his case. At one point he said that he had paid the back taxes. But as we can see, um, he still owes like $1.8 million in taxes from 2018. And then about $60,000 of that is from his 2013 taxes. Um, you can go back and I'll drop the, um, the links in the top of this video here. But you can go back and watch those um, to get more information on Don Russell. Uh, also arrested along with Don Russell was two guys one of them by the name of michael williams who was arrested for allegedly um setting Azrael's car on fire but we all know that that was a stage stunt and then the other guy's name was richard arlene and he was arrested for allegedly offering i believe it was um faith rogers five hundred thousand dollars um i guess to drop her case or to back out i'll get to that indictment um after this one um but anyway let's go ahead and get started this is the one for michael williams okay and it's united states of america against michael williams interesting it says against and not versus um affidavit in support of arrest warrant eastern district of new york and once again, when I read in the other, in the Don Russell, it was um, Sylvette Reynoso, who is a Homeland Security investigator, um, special agent um, who investigated these cases. And it says on or about June 11, 2020, within the Eastern District of New York and elsewhere, the defendant Michael Williams, together with others, did knowingly and intentionally use intimidation and threaten and attempt to use intimidation, threaten and corruptly persuade another person to wit Jane Doe, an individual whose identity is known to the affiant and engage in misleading conduct towards Jane Doe with intent to influence, delay, and prevent the testimony of Jane Doe in an official proceeding. Um, then it says to wit United States versus Robert Sylvester Kelly and then it gives the docket number and some the United States code which is title 18 sections 15 12 blah 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 and then it goes on and says on or about June 11 2020 within the Southern District of Florida the defendant Michael Williams together with others did knowingly intentionally and maliciously damage and destroy by means of fire and an explosive a vehicle used in interstate and foreign commerce and in an activity used in interstate and foreign commerce um, the source of your deponent's information and the grounds for her belief are as follows one then um, she goes to this whole thing saying who she is it says i am a special agent with the united states department of homeland security and have been since 2008 this is the same information that i read i think in the don russell one um, it says i am currently assigned to hsi new york field office and more specifically to a squad that investigates human trafficking and alien smuggling matters. Previously, I was assigned to narcotics and counter proliferation squads. I am responsible for conducting and assisting in investigations into the activities of individuals and criminal groups responsible for human trafficking and related offenses. In that capacity, I have participated in investigations involving 
Okay, so she's going on um, review of telephone records, sales site location and GPS data, review of money transfer records, surveillance, analysis of PIN register information, and the execution of search warrants, including the execution of search warrants on computers and other electronic media. As a result of my training and experience, I am familiar with the techniques and methods of operation used by individuals involved in a criminal activity to conceal their activities from detection by law enforcement authorities. Um, and it says at the bottom in the notes, because the purpose of this complaint is to set forth only those facts necessary to establish probable cause to arrest, I have not described all the relevant facts and circumstances of which I am aware. So number two, the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Eastern District of New York and HSI New York Field Office are investigating RSK, also known as R. Kelly, and others for their participation in a racketeering enterprise, enterprise involving bribery, extortion, the production of CP, transportation of women um, across state lines to engage in activity, including contact with individuals um, who couldn't consent to such activity under state law and failure to notify of STDs prior to engaging in intercourse in violation of state law and related substantive offenses and for arranging for travel in interstate commerce with intent to promote, manage, establish, and carry on an extortion in violation of state law. Three. On June 20th, 2019, a grand jury in the Eastern District of New York returned an indictment charging Kelly with racketeering. And so we don't really need to go through all of this. Um, on July 10th, 2019, the grand jury returned a superseding indictment, which added a forfeiture allegation. On December 5th, 2019, the grand jury returned a second superseding indictment adding an additional predicate act of bribery on march 12 2020 the grand jury returned a third superseding indictment against kelly among the charges against kelly in the indictment were offenses that carried a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence based on kelly's relationship with jane doe an individual whose identity is known to the event and known to the rest of us as Azriel clary Four, there is probable cause to believe that as of June 11, 2020, the defendant, Michael Williams, was aware of the federal investigation of Mr. Kelly on or about June, December 20th, 2019. Williams accompanied an individual whose identity is known to the affiant to a voluntary interview with federal agents, including the affiant. Effiant, am I pronouncing this right? <laughs> Williams himself was not interviewed and did not attend the interview with I-1. Moreover, in May 20th, Williams, using a Google account associated with one of Williams' Gmail addresses, viewed one or more articles about the federal charges that Kelly is currently facing. Five, in or about January 2020, um, Jane Doe began cooperating with federal law enforcement. Several news outlets thereafter reported that she was cooperating with law, federal law enforcement. Six, Jane Doe's father, Angelo, provided to law enforcement screenshots of text messages that he indicated were between the father and I-1. The text messages document a combative relationship between the father and I-1 and in several other messages they accused the other of slandering him slash her the screenshots also included a text message purportedly from i-1 that warns the father it might be wise for you to protect your daughter from heartache she's going to endure through this and after she had to live with every stain you guys create publicly getting angry and lashing out on live making lashing out on lives, talking about video streams, making threats or having her drop videos, taking jobs honestly doesn't look good. It's just igniting an ignorant fight that should have never started to begin with. I know you don't care, but even media personalities and production 
who were rooting for Azrael are starting to say they view her different based on her actions and words. So even in the event of the truth you say is coming, being exposed, it still won't have anything to do with how they view your daughter. Y'all may want to think about that because right now you got her out here looking crazy, honestly. Well, ain't no lie there. I mean, they, whoever this is is telling the truth in this text message. So it says, based on my participation in this investigation, I know that Jane Doe has maintained a presence on social media, including on Instagram Live and by posting videos on social media in which she publicly has discussed how Kelly physically and mentally, allegedly physically and mentally abused her during their relationship. Seven, on June 11, 2020, at approximately 2.50 a.m. Eastern Time, a black SUV, which had been leased from Enterprise rent a, car, rent a Car, a commercial vehicle rental establishment, and which was parked outside of the residence in Florida where Jane Doe was staying, was set on fire in an apparent arson. The vehicle sustained substantial damage as a result of the arson. Inside of the residence at the time of the arson were two adults and two minors. One of the adults reported to law enforcement in part and in substance that upon hearing an explosion, she ran outside of the residence and saw an individual fleeing from the scene of the fire whose arm appeared to be lit on fire. Fire investigators also determined that an accelerant was present along some or all of the outside perimeter of the residence. Now, how convenient was it that it was a rental car? And they say it was a SUV, but I could have swore it was a Honda or something like that. Um, I'm going to have to go back and look at them pictures and see what kind of car that really was. But I guess Enterprise, like, dang, why we got to be drawn into this drama y'all got going on? Number eight, a surveillance camera positioned at a residence along a street immediately parallel to the residence showed a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed at approximately 2.53 a.m. While the footage is grainy, a detective from the New York City Auto Crime Division advised that the vehicle in the, in the footage is consistent with a GMC Yukon. The SUV was rented in Florida by the father of Jane Doe from Enterprise, a business that operates in state commerce and whose headquarters is located outside of Florida and New York. 10. On June 15, 2020, the Honorable Roman E. Reyes Jr., United States Magistrate Judge for the Eastern District of New York, authorized a search warrant to Google for users who had conducted a search of the address of the residence close in time to the arson. Among the individuals who searched the address was an individual using IP addresses, and then they give the IP addresses. And on June 10th, 2020, at 1029 p.m. Eastern Time, June 11, 2020, at 1259 a.m. Eastern Time, and June 11, 2020, at 140 a.m. Eastern Time, the arson took place at approximately 2.50 a.m. Eastern Time on June 11, 2020. Verizon wireless records show that the IP address at those particular times belonged to telephone number known to the affiant with a 786 area code and ending in 8432 which is subscribed to by Michael Williams at an address in Valdosta, Georgia, the Valdosta residence. Google records show that the individual who conducted the search of the address of the residence used Google account ID, and then it gives the ID number, um, which listed Michael Williams as the name of the user of the account. And then it gives an email address as an email address for the account and the 8432 telephone as the recovery SMS, according to Google records. And it gives the email address again, was created on May 27, 2020. Number 11, the defendant, Michael Williams, is, is a family member of I-1. I-1 once served as a publicist for Kelly. And guys, I think I forgot to mention this in the previous video. Are they referring to Cash, the girl that's been running around with Don Russell? Because, I mean, they all seem like crooks to me. But anyway, number 12. 
Uh, on June 11, 2020, the Honorable Rowan L. Van Uni United States Magistrate Judge for the Eastern District of New York authorized a search warrant in various telephone companies that operated cell towers serving the residents. The results of that search warrant showed that among the telephone numbers that were served by those cell towers on June 11, 2020, between 2 o'clock a.m. and 3.30 a.m. was the 843 telephone. And let's go back up here because there was a note on. It says, Michael Williams' date of birth is March 11, 1983. Um, the number sequence after MW. Um, so they're showing how the email address was crafted using his initials and his date of birth at gmail.com. These people are stupid. Okay, 13. On July 3rd, 2020, the Honorable James Orenstein, United States Magistrate for the Eastern District of New York, authorized a search warrant on Verizon Wireless for historical location information associated with the 8432 telephone. Verizon Wireless records show that the 8432 telephone traveled from the vicinity of Valdosta, Georgia, where the defendant Michael Williams resides and where the 8432 telephone was on June 10, 2020 at 7.40 p.m. to the vicinity of Kissimmee, Florida, where the residence is located, to the vicinity of Lake City, Florida, where the 8432 telephone was on June 11, 2020 at 5.31 a.m., and finally back to the vicinity of Valdosta, Georgia, where the 8432 telephone was on June 11, 2020 at 2.09 p.m. 14. As detailed in this paragraph, there is probable cause to believe that the defendant, Michael Williams, uses a second telephone number known to the affiant with a 229 area code and ending in 8231. In addition to the 8432 telephone and the second email address, in addition to the Gmail I've already mentioned, specifically in or about 2015, the defendant Michael Williams submitted an application for a United States passport on which he listed his email address as MikeWill437 at gmail.com. Google records indicate that the 8231 telephone is listed as the recovery telephone number for the MikeWheel437 at gmail.com email account. The 8231 telephone is also subscribed to by Michael Williams. Moreover, a review of telephone records for the 8231 telephone shows regular communications between a telephone known to be used by I-1 and the 8231 telephone, including on June 11, 2020 at 12.44 a.m., approximately two hours and six minutes before the above described arson, when I-1 placed a telephone call to the 8231 telephone and the call lasted approximately 193 seconds. 15. A 2003 GMC Yukon with Georgia license plate XMC789 in vehicle identification number, and it gives the number, is registered to another individual, I-2, at the Valdosta residence. Law enforcement agents have conducted physical surveillance in the vicinity of the Valdosta residence and have observed the white GMC Yukon, the Williams GMC Yukon, with no front license plate in the driveway next to the Valdosta residence as recently as August. August 3rd, 2020. Law enforcement agents were able to view the bike of the Williams GMC Yukon to observe the bike license plate, but took photographs of the Williams GMC Yukon that depict distinct damage to the front and the side of the Williams GMC Yukon. Records from the Florida Department of Transportation, which include photographs, indicate that I, at approximately 1:09 a.m. Eastern Time on July, excuse me, on June 11, 2020, approximately an hour and 41 minutes before the arson described above, a GMC Yukon with no front license plate and with the same distinct damage to the front and side 
as the Williams GMC Yukon traveled southbound through the Leesburg Toll Plaza north exit from US 27 on the Florida Turnpike to at approximately 3.34 a.m. Eastern Time on June 11, 2020, approximately 44 minutes after the arson described above, a GMC Yukon with no front license plate and with the same distinct damage to the front and side as the Williams GMC Yukon traveled northbound through the Western Beltway Mainline Toll Plaza on the Florida Turnpike. And three, at approximately 4.06 a.m. Eastern Time on June 11, 2020, approximately one hour and 16 minutes after the arson described above, a GMC Yukon with no front license plate and with the same distinct damage to the front and side as the Williams GMC Yukon traveled northbound through the Leesburg Main Line Toll Plaza on the floor of the turnpike. Notably, the GMC Yukon that traveled through the tolls at approximately 1.09 a.m., 3.34 a.m., and 4.06 a.m. also appears to have had no visible rear license plate at the time based on, one, a review of photographs of the rear of the vehicle as it traveled through the tolls, and two, the fact that the records indicate that the vehicle did not pay the tolls and was thus designated as a violator. Child, so y'all driving from Georgia to Florida to set fires on cars and didn't even stop to pay the toll? Just looking to be caught, sound like to me. So anyway, child, significantly, a license plate reader in Georgia captured the Williams GMC Yukon in Hahira, Georgia on June 10, 2020 at 7.25 p.m. Eastern Time with his rear license plate clearly visible strongly suggesting that Williams removed the license plate before he traveled to the residence in an attempt to avoid detection by law enforcement. According to Google Maps, depending on the route taken, the Leesburg toll plazas are approximately 60.6 to 72.5 miles from the residence where the arson occurred. The western best way the Western Beltway Mainline Toll Plaza is approximately 26.8 to 31.4 miles from the residence where the arson occurred. 16. The photograph of the front of the GMC Yukon that traveled through the Leesburg Mainline Toll Plaza at approximately 4.06 a.m. shows that what appears to be a male individual in the driver's seat. 17. On July 29, 2020, the Honorable Robert M. Levy, or Levi, or Levy, authorized a search warrant for the Google accounts associated with MikeWill437 at gmail.com. Um, and then I guess they entered into evidence. What all did they enter, y'all? The photographs are black and white photographs. The GMC Yukon appears to be white in the photographs. And I need to go back up here because I thought they said that the car that was set on fire was a Yukon. Let me go back up there when I finish reading this. I'm almost done. Um, it says, both of which, as described above, appear to be used and controlled by the defendant, Michael Williams. Execution of the search warrant on the Google accounts revealed <clears throat> the following. A. Williams uses MikeWheel437 at gmail.com and MW031983 at gmail.com. Search the residence of the residence on multiple occasions with the first search on April 10th and the most recent search on June 15th, four days after the date of the arson. On April 14, 2020, Williams, using the MikeWheel437 at gmail.com account, conducted a search for can you drive in Florida without a tag as long as you have insurance on your car. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, help us. Or as Phaedra would say, Jesus, take the wheel and drive fast, okay? C, on April 17, 2020, Williams, using the Mike Wheel 437 Gmail account, conducted a search of where can I buy a .50 custom machine gun? Oh, hell, now we got to shoot up. View multiple YouTube videos about Jane Doe. 
On May 23rd, 2020 and May 25th, 2020, Williams using the MikeWill437 at gmail.com account visited several websites about female individuals who had made allegations about Kelly. He also searched SRK News and R. Kelly News. Ooh, child. The dates and times provided in the Google records in the Universal Coordinated Time the dates set forth below are based on a conversion from UTC to Eastern Time. F. On June 7, 2020 and June 9, 2020, Williams, using the MW03111983 Gmail account, conducted a search for countries that don't have extradition with the United States. Like, child, where was he going in the middle of a pandemic? What difference does it make who doesn't have extradition laws? You can't get on the plane and go nowhere. G. On June 21st, 2020, Williams, using the Mike Will 43 Gmail account, conducted a search for fertilizer and diesel fuel and subsequently visited websites titled How Do Fertilizer Bombs Work? Detonation Properties of Mixtures of, am of Ammonium Nitrite Based Fertilizers and Fuels and Why Fertilizer Can Be an Explosive Mix. H on June 28, 2020, Williams, using the Mike Will 437 Gmail account, conducted a search for witness intimidation and case law for tampering with the witness and visited websites laying out the statutory language and penalties of Title 18 United States Code Sections 1512 and 1513. Child, I. Whew. On July 9, 2020, Williams, using the milk. Lord, I keep saying milk for some reason. The Mike Wheel 437 at gmail.com account visited websites that contain the statutory language for Title 18 United States Code Sections 2423, um, 2422, uh, which is coercion and enticement, 2421A, promotion or facilitation of prostitution. In 1962, racketeering, based on my participation in this investigation, there is probable cause to believe that Williams was attempting to review each of the statues with which Kelly is currently charged. And then have in the notes on um, Kelly is charged with a violation of section 2421, not section 2428. Well, thank you for clarifying that for us. And then 18, because public filing of this document could result in a risk of flight by the defendant as well as jeopardize the government's investigation, your deponent respectfully requests that the complaint and arrest warrant be filed under seal. Wherefore, your deponent respectfully requests that the defendant, Michael Williams, be dealt with according to the law. And um, for those of you who are going to ask, well, how did you get it? Um, the document was unsealed today. So that's how I was able to um, access it. OK, let me go back up here to see. Uh, what type of car this was, they said, that was set on fire. Um, let's see. So anyway, what you guys are thinking about this while I'm scrolling through here? Like, it's just not some, as somebody said in the comments on the last video, there's some frackin' bull ass going on. Like, this is just, <laughs> I mean, like, who really in 20, um, in the year 2020 don't know that law enforcement has access to search all these Google that everything you do on the internet on the internet is traced. It's like I was telling a guy who has a page on Twitter um, who covers the Atlanta protests and he had made a post where he was saying, oh, you know, undercover agents are going door to door, um, picking up people that he was like, so delete your social media or something he was saying. And I had responded to him and said, if they're already going door to door, what you deleting your social media for? Because they already have your social media. All your stuff is on lock. They done already reviewed it, printed it out, documented it and sealed. So ain't no need in deleting your, um, 
social media and then i was also telling you guys a couple of months ago how the government <clears throat> like there are positions within the federal um government federal law enforcement that is basically social media forensics and all these people do is when they are investigating somebody and working on a case they have people that just sit there and they enter these keywords right and it brings up searches of you know everything that has come up under that keyword and that's how they be tracking people and if you're under the investigation you know they're looking at your social media they're looking at everything and it's not just the federal government it is you know people getting divorced like you <laughs> your spouse filed for a divorce their lawyer has already hired private investigators who have already scanned and subpoenaed Facebook and Instagram and all these people to get access to your records. So anybody that's Googling stuff is either dumb as hell or this is um, all a setup. Now, which one y'all going for? Is it dumb as hell or y'all going for the Eastern District of New York? Um, trying to um, create probable God probable cause when they go into the September 14th um, appeals hearing so they can say here here is all the proof you know that he is a threat to society he's a threat to our witnesses he's tampering with evidence and you know all this other good stuff and for those of y'all wondering why I'm talking like this it's because um, that's how I read books of fiction and this is reading like um, a chapter out of a fiction novel um, maybe a John Gresham novel or something, but I don't know. John Gresham isn't this sloppy, so he um, would have written a better story than this. Um, I don't see where they talked about the car. I'm looking for it. Um, okay, there's the text message. Okay. So it says at 2.50 a.m. a black SUV, which had been leased from Enterprise, a commercial vehicle rental establishment, and which was parked outside the residence in Florida where she lives. Yeah, so they're saying that, and that right, so it was just convenient that it just happened to be a leased vehicle. Um, that on the day that this person drove from Georgia in the middle of the night to set fire to a car, that there just happened to be a leased vehicle, not their vehicle that they purchased um, in the driveway. And they're saying an SUV. That clearly looked like a um, sedan to me, but I'll go back and look at the picture. But anyway, that's it for me, guys. Um, leave your comments below, rate the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't also haven't done so already. And I will also also be coming back with another video regarding the charges for the Richard um, R line guy who is charged with offering um, sound like faith on um, $500,000 but we'll get into that indictment and see exactly who they are talking about so until the next time I should talk to you guys later bye bye